Hi, everyone, and welcome back to LearnerRadiology.com. I'm your host today, Brent Weinberg. We're going to go through case number eight of the brain tumor series. We have a little bit of a tricky case here where we're going to be looking at a 38-year-old with a history of migraine and worsening left orbital headache. Here we have our first images for this case. We have a flare on the left here, a T2 in the middle, and a T1 pre-contrast on the right. To make this a little easier, because as I said, it is a little bit of a tricky case, I've labeled the images for you. Here we have some more images. We just have a little bit of a close-up of that T2, close-up of that uh, T1 pre-contrast. Maybe you can get a little better idea of where the abnormality is, kind of what's going on there. Here you have diffusion and ADC. Maybe that can clear up uh, some of the possibilities there. So now you have a question before you get to the diagnosis itself. This is a question that's very common in radiology. People want to know what kind of things are T1 hyperintense. This is a negative question, so it's asking you which of these is not likely to be T1 hyperintense. And so you're looking at these substances. You need to rule out the ones that are likely to be T1 bright, and then you'll, you'll see what's left behind. So now we're going to have a few more images here. I've got a blown up image of your T1 pre-contrast and your T1 post-contrast. Maybe take a look, try to figure out, number one, is this lesion intrinsically T1 hyperintense? And number two, do you feel like it's enhancing? Finally, we're going to stop here with uh, some CT images. These are from a CT angiogram. So you can see it's an angiographic phase. The vessels are avidly enhancing here. See your lesion there. And uh, you might see some other findings that will clue you into what you're looking at. But think about what's the density of this lesion? What do you think you're looking at? With that information in mind, I want you to think about now what's your most likely diagnosis for this case. So in this case, we're looking at a ruptured dermoid. Dermoids are inclusion tumors um, comprised of retained embryonal tissues. So some of the embryonal layers are contained there. These are a spectrum of tumors that include epidermoid, which is comprised only of epidermis, has a reduced diffusion. Dermoids have epithelium as well as the epidermal appendages. And so these are the ones that can have uh, things like hair and teeth. Uh, teratomas also contain multiple embryonal layers and can have any of those layers. But on imaging, when you have a dermoid, what you're typically going to see is a fat density lesion, most commonly in the midline or just off the midline, supracellar, such as in this case. And one of your major clues is you're going to have fat signal. And so that will manifest itself as intrinsic T1 hyperintensity. Or if you do fat saturation, you'll have uh, fat suppression of the lesion itself. These tend to have very little enhancement, so you're usually not seeing enhancement there. Now, when they rupture, you may see little globules of fat elsewhere, and that can lead to a chemical meningitis or seizure. It's potentially possible that the patient in this case was having headaches from a chemical meningitis from the fat rupture. So here you see your pre and post contrast T1. You have some little spilled globules of fat here in the left cilia fissure, as well as in the sort of anterior to the midbrain and in the interpeduncular cistern here. When you give contrast, you're not really seeing a lot of enhancement. Most of your hyperintensity there is coming from the intrinsic hyperintensity from this lesion. So we have this T1 hyperintense lesion in the supracellar region adjacent to the carotid there. So it probably contains fat, but you want to confirm that. And you're able to confirm it here with this CT. So you see this lesion clearly has fat density, so it's sort of similar to the subcutaneous fat. And this also makes it easier to see the ruptured globules of fat. You have one there, some of the kind of quadrigeminal plate there, as well as the bilateral sylvian fissures. So these are the quintessential findings of a ruptured dermoid. Your question, uh, the first question was, which of these is least likely to be T1 hyperintense? So all of these things, blood, fat, contrast, melanin, manganese is a paramagnetic metal, just uh, like gadolinium, and uh, that, uh, that can be T1 hyperintense as well. So CSF is the correct answer there. With that, that concludes our eighth case of the Brain Tumor Series. Be sure to like uh, the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. Check out our website at learnerradiology.com and be on the lookout for the rest of the uh, lectures as part of this brain tumor case review. We're going to have a total of 20 brain tumor cases, so we've got 12 to go. Thanks for tuning in today.